welcome, welcome. Thank you, family and friends, for joining me at Maria Loves to Talk. What am I talking about, you guys? I have a lot to talk about. A lot on my plate, a lot of stories. Some of them are just mind-boggling because you think like, did this really happen? Did someone really catch this on video? Did they really catch this with their little iPhone? I don't know, what, what are we on? iPhone 14 or what are you guys on? How many of you have the iPhone 14? Okay, so yes, this is one, two. I have four different stories from different parts. Texas, one from Louisiana, I think another one from California and one from Philadelphia. And, it's, and I like to mix my stories up, you guys. Just like when I do my perfumes, I like to mix my perfumes up. So, hey. If there is something you're interested in, you want to know what I'm talking about and my little thoughts, stay tuned. I'll we'll get you some snacks. Come on back. If this is not for you, I understand you guys. There's a billion videos on YouTube. Go get them or better yet, make your own video. That way you get to say what you want to say and reason and talk about the stories you want to talk about. So let's get started with story. Austin County woman attacked by grocery store clerks. Over $50 she found. Just like $50. And I I have some stories for you I, after this one because y'all know, y'all know, you know your girl is long-winded, right? Okay. Austin County, Texas. An Austin County woman wants the people who have tagged her inside this grocery store over a $50 bill arrested. That's right. They need their butts arrested. You don't pick on an old senior citizen lady, 65 years young, at the best of her life, having been in any kind of fights in like 20, 30 years us can see as a cherished mother, grandmother, while others simply see her from their convenience store. It's horrible, and Ms. Smith, forgive me for saying that, but I wanted to get across the analogy to send home our point tonight. Ms. Betty Smith was making a quick trip to a convenience store in Austin County for ice cream, and look at this. The senior citizen found herself in a headlock, surrounded by what's reminiscent of an old school lynch mob, even an arm around her throat subduing her. These were young people who were ready to show, and forgive me once again for saying this, this thieving woman who was in charge, letting her know they were in charge. Here's how it started. Mrs. Smith says she spotted a $50 bill on the floor in the convenience store in Industry, Texas. So she picked it up, like we all would do. And moments later, all hell broke loose. Workers ran around her and locked the door to the store so she couldn't leave. She was cornered. She, once again, was even put in a headlock. All three workers have been fired fired and the manager told Fox 26 he did not condone that behavior but Smith and her family say it's not enough they say they want charges brought against the workers and they're also upset with how the sheriff's office handled and responded the situation without trying to figure out what was going on in the video and if you watch the video I watched it earlier today you see a deputy pull up and then go straight for the black woman without even asking questions or investigating. Let's get to our guest here in the studio. We have with us Mrs. Betty Smith, um, her grandchildren and family and friends, and Tiffany Perry. Glad to have you here. First of all, when you went to that store, did you ever imagine anything like that happening to you? No, I didn't. Have you ever been to that store? Have you ever seen those employees before? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've stayed there a lifetime, almost. I've been there 40 some years, and I've been pulled it. I stayed out in the country for I've been in the industry all my life. Mm -hmm. And so, what happened? Take us back step by step. You went into the store, you were leaving. No. And what happened? Well, I went into the store, and when I went in there, I said, Oops, I said, My lucky day. I said, I found a $50 bill. Because I wanted them to be aware that I. You know, when the camera see me, picked it up off so the floor. So you announced, you told them you found a $50 bill. Yeah. And she told me, she said, uh-uh, I'm the manager, and you're going to have to give it to me. 
Wow. She said, my friend might have dropped it when he was here earlier. They didn't even know it was down there. Mm -hmm. it, it was just laying there in the opening, and I picked it up. And, and so what happened after that? I told her. We see an argument ensue, and you guys get into an argument, and we can see you where you lash at someone, and what happened? Tell us about that. They wore my ass out. That's what they did. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sorry about that, because it's a horrible situation for you to go through. But they were all on you, right? Yeah, I couldn't get it loose. I was scared. I was terrified. Ooh, that, that girl in the paint just had me double. And she was all up in my ear, all close in my face, spitting all in my face. And I was too scared to spit back. Look at her. What does that feel like for you? Ooh, I was, I felt like I was coming to death. And then I, my feet started burning real bad from nerve damage. I said, can I please get out and get my medicine? The police just looked at me, never unlocked the door and let me out. I said, my special needs son is in the car. I said, I need to get out of here to my baby. Never unlocked the door and let me out. To be let out. And she said, no, she would not let her out. She started fighting me at the door and the police officer arrested me when he came and I was telling so him. So when he showed up, and, and which department is this? Aust Austin, Austin County. County Police Department. When this Austin County deputy showed up, he saw your black face and said, this is a troublemaker. Yes, he said, he I saw you assault her. trying to ascertain what the hell was going on. Yes, he told me that. I saw you assault her. I told him, sir, my grandma is locked in that store. Can you please get my grandma out of that store? He was so worried about arresting me. I asked him later on, could I take a statement? He refused our statements. We never got to put statements in, and they've just treated us really bad. It just, but it's got to be enraging. Yeah, it to is. To see your aunt go through something like that. It was. With people, young people with their arms around her damn throat. And it, it was. A friend to them. I think he knew them personally. And I don't even know about that. Yeah, but I, know. I was on the inside. And Let's bring Ms. Smith back in. Go ahead. I was on the inside. And she told me, she said, you want to go to jail? She said, I'm going to call the law. And then they talked to each other and called so-and-so. And so I said, now you're calling somebody you know, huh? And she dialed 911 on her cell phone, and I dialed 911 on my cell phone. But she called his personal phone and called him up there. Now, how do you know this was his personal phone that she called? Because I heard him talking. Mm -hmm. We all have come across money. Now, what I want to come across, and I'm going to keep it real, I want to come across a suitcase full of money. I want to come across a Rolex. I want to come across some Elizabeth Taylor jewelry. That's what I want to come across. So I, my sister, and I'm going to tell you what happened to one of my little nephews when I told you work at Costco. And that's why I really feel that these people ain't wrong. And I'm not, I know some people already look at, and I hate in a way uh, when people see pictures of someone because right there you got some people that just automatically you know she's wrong because of whatever or she's right for whatever but they're not looking at the facts they're not looking at the law and they're not thinking about if it was their mama okay so nephew tells me uh this was during the holidays i think i don't know if it was christmas or Thanksgiving. we were all sitting around eating Thank you, thank you, my father. Ain't nobody got the COVID. Ain't nobody got the Corona. Ain't nobody got the canola. That's right, I said it, you guys. He said, well, you know what? Um, they came and they called me into the office. I didn't know, I thought maybe I had did something wrong. Now he don't talk like that, you guys. He got a little, little more bass to his voice. Um, they hand him some money. He said, what's it? He said, man, I'm saying this by how they talk, you know, young dudes. Um, this is from that purse that you found and you turned in. You remember that purse? He said, yeah, I remember. That was like over a month ago. They said, yeah, we had to keep the purse here for a month. And our policy, uh, when when we uh, customers or, or um, employees turn in a wallet or a purse and they're sending money, uh, we give it to that person who found it. So we wait a month. So they wait a month and don't jump, don't jump, go try to get me in trouble now, saying what they say. <laughs> so he said that they gave him $80 and that the woman's uh, credit card, I think we asked, I think my sister, someone asked, well, if they had her wallet, what's in your wallet? Your ID. Normally in your wallet, there's, uh, there's, or in your purse, there's other identification. 
you guys, y'all know I'm I, I am a semi Sherlock Holmes, uh, Nancy Grace, Nancy Drew, uh, Agatha Christie. I am. I, I'm not gonna tell you all the little detective stuff I've done, which I should have charged. Uh, I was finding people before uh, some of these websites that they have where you can just go in or you can just pay a few dollars. I do not understand if you have the woman's wallet, you have her ID, why someone couldn't get on the computer. Because when I worked at JCPenney and, and Credit, we would get on the computer. That's right. We get on the computer and customer service and we're looking and we say, oh, that's, you know, because I remember a dude that I worked with uh, at the federal building and he had came into the store. What did he do? Did he, I don't know if he left something behind or receipt. And yes. I got in the computer, uh, and he was an engineer. I didn't like him. I, I knew he had a little crush on me, but I couldn't stand it, him for whatever reason. And I got in the computer, and like, we look, oh, yeah. And somebody said, yeah, I know that neighborhood is way back over there. Make a long story short, why did y'all get on the computer or, or, or find her and just say, hey, Miss So-and-so, you left your purse here. So right now, and I know because I'm a woman and, and we've all been in that situation, she's wondering, where did I leave my wallet? Where did I leave my purse? Where did I, where, you know, did I leave it at, 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 at Sam's? Did I leave it at Costco? Did I leave it at Macy's? Did I leave it at Dealers? Did I leave it at Ross? And probably had to go get a whole new credit card. No telling, she might have been Alzheimer's. She could have been dementia. You know, second story. Um, I love going to Goodwill. I love going to thrift shops. How many of you guys have found money? I have found $20. And I'm not going to tell you where I found it on several occasions. Guess what, you guys? I didn't tell nobody. I didn't say, hey. I just found $20 in these hot pans. Hey, I just found $20 in this wallet. Hey, I just found $20 in this old family uh, phone, uh, not phone book, um, photo book. They don't need to know. Um, while back, when I was at the grocery store, and it's a little different from this lady's story, there was an elderly man in front of me. And when I, after he left, I looked down. I really should have ran after him. He had left, I think it was either a 10 or a 20. And I told the cashier, I don't know why. And now I think about it. I should have told her nothing. I should have just went run out there because all she did, and that's what this old heifer would have did, was took that money and put it in her blue jeans or put it in back in the register. And she would have been $10 over. I forgot what it's called when you work as a register, a cashier and you're $10 over or whatever. I know what happens if you 10 or $20 short because you can get in trouble and get fired. I don't think this lady, um, Miss Smith, I, I, I don't think she would have should have told them anything because at this point, they feel that that $50 belonged to the store. All they were gonna do is keep it. Uh, the girl said, it's her friend. Who is your friend? Show me the video of your friend. Who was the person? Let's look and see. So right now, Lindemann's store is back paddling. They claim that they fired these uh, so-called rogue uh, employees, um, but they're most likely family, family members or friends of a friend. They'll be back after this, like she said, after this died down, they'll be back. What what I think this suit or because it will be a suit or some kind of settlement, what it's worth, I, I don't know. It it depends. I guess it depends on what type of lawyer, who the lawyer, but they know they are wrong. And then what I didn't like the woman's granddaughter saying that when she came, she was outside of the store, right at the doorway, and the grandmother foot was in in the door. And one was inside of the store. And this heifer, the one that's in the pink, that had the old lady in the chokehold, she started grabbing and reaching for the granddaughter. And the granddaughter, of course, I'm going to defend myself. So when the, the uh, police come, he says, oh, you're the one 
I'm going to get you. you the one. I saw you hit in her back. She said, no, I'm defending myself. She hit me. I'm outside the store. I'm not even inside the store. He arrests the granddaughter. So, um, grandma or anybody else that's in this situation, don't tell these people uh, you found some money. The only way that I could have seen telling someone is if the person was right there in front of me, like with the elderly man, or a couple of times when I work as a cashier, people would leave something behind or their groceries. I'll run after them or send the, the bagger to go, go and get it for them. Now, a couple of months, I think I left my debit card, not my credit, my debit card at the bank. And I kept going in, going in to deposit money, blah, blah, blah. But all I had was my ID. And I ended up having to get a new uh, debit card. And I really think I had left it over there with them. And they did not contact me or anything. These stores that do that, they'll have your ID. Somewhere else I went. And they had a bunch of customers credit cards and IDs. I do not remember where I went and it was a, a a regular store, not a little booby boo store, a regular store. And I'm thinking, why don't y'all look these people up and call them? Why do, I mean, you got all these people, these people running around having to get IDs or wondering where their ID or driver license, where their credit card, and y'all sitting up got a little stash of them instead of contacting them. I just hate to see that elderly lady abused like that because it didn't have to go down like, uh, it didn't have to do that. They didn't have to put pause. They didn't have to put a chokehold. And if they actually call her racial slurs, that was so not necessary, uh, you know, but hey, y'all gonna have to pay, you know, you gotta, uh, when you do things like that, you know, it's not the old days when people could do that stuff and get away with it or grab somebody and pull them to the back of the store and whoop up on them and stuff. You can't do that stuff. Okay, so moving on to our next story. And this one is, is just inhumane. Um, I hate to see people abuse and take advantage of the elderly. So that's what this one, and it's kind of grisly. So I'm just let y'all know, graphic. Pennsylvania woman, Verity Beck, B-E-C-K, accused of deleted parents dismembering their bodies with a chainsaw. So she obviously watched the Texas Chainsaw Massacre one too many times. That's just me saying it. Reed and Marion Beck, Miriam Beck, found deleted in Abington Township, Pennsylvania home where daughter lived. I wonder how far are they from uh, old boy parents from the Poconos. Remember BCK? Uh, Brian um, Christopher Kohlberger. New information in the case of a woman who police say killed and dismembered her parents in Evington Township. The details may be tough for some to hear. Siafa Lewis has the update. On Wednesday afternoon, Montgomery County District Attorney Kevin Steele and Abington Township Police Chief Patrick Malloy announced charges in a double homicide as well as an ongoing investigation. Gruesome is the only way to describe what happened to 73-year-old Reed Beck and his 72-year-old wife Miriam. Their 43-year-old daughter Verity Beck, who lived with them, has been arrested and charged with first and third degree murder. She's alleged to have shot both of her parents in their heads and then using a chainsaw and two large trash cans appears to have been trying to cover her tracks according to prosecutors. This is somebody that is um, dismembering you know her mother and father and you know and putting um, body parts in in trash cans um, so you know clearly you know she's trying to get rid of the evidence. Miriam Beck was a longtime school nurse at Lower Moreland High School until 2018, 
Her son currently works at the school. According to the criminal complaint, he was checking in on his parents Tuesday night because he hadn't spoken to them since January 7th. When he entered their home, he saw a dead body covered with a bloody sheet. The complaint goes on to say that he told police he also came into contact with his sister Verity, whom he spoke to for about half an hour. He then went home and called police. As of now, a motive remains unclear. What I'm here to tell you is just a, a horrible, tragic um, situation where um, a 73-year-old and 72-year-old were um, murdered. Authorities say police found three handguns in the home. Two of them were registered to Verity Beck. They also found an in-wall safe in a second-floor bedroom, along with some tools and drill marks on the safe. Abington police and detectives from the Montgomery County DA's office continue to investigate this case. Siafa Lewis. Online on Facebook early this morning where people were saying, I think these people were teachers or the woman. Everything that I saw was good about the people, that they were so sweet, they were so loving. The woman was a good woman. Uh, she was a helpful woman. She was a good woman for the community. And, and it's always the good ones. It's always the good people. It's always the people who took care of their kids, took good care of their kids, who love on their kids, who treat them worse than a dog. Prayers go out to to these poor people, these little elderly people, because that don't even make any sense. Chicken mother and two young sons freeze to death in park. And I think we're fixing to have another big freeze. Okay. A third child survived and sought help from a stranger after she found... Father and her two sons die after taking refuge in an overgrown park. Fox 2's Jessica Dupnak is live with more. And Jessica, I mean, it is a heartbreaking story. Unbelievable. I'm not sure I've ever covered something quite like this. And the sheriff tonight saying that this is all uh, indicative of a mental health crisis. That 35-year-old Mo Monica Kennedy was in. And I want you to think about this. For about two days, uh, she and her three children were wandering through Pontiac, barely clothed. We're talking about 10-year-old Lily, that's the daughter, 9-year-old Kyle, and 3-year-old Malik. Now, this all started about three weeks ago. The family says they noticed Monica started acting bizarrely, really something they hadn't seen before. Cut to Friday, uh, the family really just wandering through the streets of Pontiac when they had a home. She lived in an apartment with those kids and they had a house. Uh, on Saturday afternoon sometime, they showed up in the area of Branch and Gillespie. They were knocking on doors. Monica was telling these folks in the neighborhood that they were hungry. Uh, people tried to give her money. She wouldn't accept it. And that's when they started wandering into this overgrown area. Uh, uh, near Crystal Lake there and she had told the kids that they that she believed that someone was after them trying to kill them that it was all a big conspiracy that it was all a conspiracy or something like that and that's when she told the kids to lay down where they all laid down in this field and the only one sadly that woke up was Lily she put on her mom's coat and ran for help and that's when police later discovered uh, Monica with the two little boys there just nine and three years old we talked to Monica's brother who says that he had never seen anything like this from her he had been searching all weekend let's take a listen it was amazing, so smart, and it's just so sad that they were so young, didn't even get to experience life yet, and I wouldn't blame her. Um, I just want to know what happened, what was in her system, like, I, I need answers to that so I can know what type of state of mind she was on. It's never, ever have been her. Oakland County Sheriff Michael Bouchard really pushing the mental health services in Oakland County at an earlier press conference. He did say that that family did not reach out to the sheriff's office. They did get some 911 calls throughout the weekend of someone walking through Pontiac uh, without many clothes on, not dressed appropriately, but they really didn't have all the pieces to the puzzle. Every time they would go out to that area, they'd be nowhere to be found. And that little girl, 10 year old, brave little Lily, uh, she said that uh, her mom told her if anyone were to approach them, that they were to run. So really just a breakdown overall. Uh, you'll hear more from the sheriff on those mental health services and, and a little more on what happened coming up later at six. But for now, reporting live, Jessica Dupnak. Wow. That one is, is 
just as sad. So her brother saying he he thinks something happened to her. So he I don't know if he's uh, the uh, refuting uh, that she was under a mental health crisis or paranoia prevent this happening again. These kids froze to death. And the other one, the oldest one, she could have been gone too if she wouldn't have woke up. I, 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 don't, I don't know what to say other than prayers go out to this family. Then I saw on the news, um, the people, that couple that saved the elderly man that was out in the freezer and brought him into their home. Uh, he had those frostbites all over that he did end up losing some of his fingers. Um, so yeah, that is nothing to play with. So leave me your thoughts.